Good afternoon lovelies, how are you all today? I hope you're well. Goodness me, it suddenly feels a little bit cold, but it's gorgeous and bright. And this afternoon, I've literally got a couple of hours between appointments. So I thought, you know what, stuff it. I'm gonna race off to the garden. I don't know what I'm gonna get done. I've got an idea, I've got a couple of ideas, but it's one of those uh, carpe diem moments for sure. I, I wasn't actually planning to come today, uh, but the days when I was planning to come later in the week now look a bit busy. And it's something I was referring to a few videos back about um, my need, <laughs> my real need to get outside, to have light uh, <laughs> so that I don't go a bit balmy upstairs. So yes, if you find yourself in a similar position to me, especially if your garden is your back garden and you find a little window of time, grab it, carpe diem, <laughs> get out there and do something. So two things today, one, definitely gather up some more leaves and um, thank you all for your great comments and suggestions on that video a week or so ago about um, leaf collecting or your great ideas. What I'm going to try and do today is something I wasn't able to when I filmed that first leaf collection. I talked about, <laughs> this might get really badly wrong, I talked about the possibility, <coughs> excuse me, of, because I don't have a lawn mower to go backwards and forwards over them, of maybe putting some in my big red trug and using my strimmer. Well, on that day, um, that tripod just got knocked because of Rusty. Hello, gorgeous boy. Oh. Um, yeah, on that day, I went to use my strimmer to give it a go, and my battery was completely flat, which is very unlike me, because normally, after I've used it, I take the battery straight home, recharge it, so it's always ready for the next time. There might be some hissing in a minute, because Poppy's here, Rosie's down there, and Rusty's somewhere behind me. Um, Rusty, you alright buddy? So I'm going to give that a go today and then the other thing um, is the bed, the one of the mini perma beds in bed number four that you saw me giving its last little dig over to is still uncovered. So I'm going to have a look in the compost bin I'm not expecting much because that bin was completely emptied two months ago, middle of October, for the broad bean bed because the broad bean bed is going to be working really hard. Broad beans now through till May, then followed by cocoa de pampole. So I gave it all the compost that was in that bin. So yeah, stop chatting Vivi, get on with the work. <laughs> right, I think tackle the compost bin first, yes. Oh, we're a bit into the sun, how oh, lovely. So, like I say, not expecting much from this at all. Yes, I can see some kitchen waste in the top, a load of brassica leaves, but let's be having it. You know, the thing is, a little teeny tiny bit is better than none at all, isn't it? So, let's just get that out of the way for a second. It's quite heavy. Yay! <laughs> Obviously the top is very new, recent stuff. But in terms of getting this um, little palmer bed covered, I don't really care at the moment what it is just want to get something on it so that the winter rain doesn't pelt it hard again. <laughs> tons and tons of brassica leaves. They are useful at this time of year though, aren't they, to give a bit of green compost. <laughs> Use a bit of a... Oh yeah, I recognise a load of chopped up cosmos stalks but, uh, yeah it's maybe not the most beautiful rotted down compost but like I say 
just as something to cover, then, um, then yeah, yippee, yippee, yippee. And, like I say, I'm going to spare a few minutes today. Might as well crack into something, eh? Yeah. Oh, onion skins, squash peel. Um, I, <clears throat> I don't ever make very much kitchen waste because I tend not to peel my veg. But obviously, every little bit that does get um, cast aside and not eaten comes straight back down here. Oh, gotcha. That's some more white stuff in my honest. Oh. Almost a barrel load. Well, yeah, it's a barrel load. That'll do me. Right. Let's go and get this spread. Something sprouted. It's a bit of garlic. I don't know if there's enough here to cover the entire bed, but it'll do most of it. a bit messy. <laughs> it's not messy, it's gorgeous. get on with things and I need to find some more cardboard too. Something else I've been meaning to do for the last couple of days but keep forgetting. Oh, need my lists. Um, <coughs> a week or so ago 
someone mentioned to me, oh, who was it? Was it you, Michelle? I can't remember. Um, that it's possible to eat fennel roots. So where's, I'm not sure, yeah, you'll have seen by now. Um, all right, Poppy. I took the last of my, the sort of the, ba the bases, the roots of the fennel out to get that um, little perma bed dug out. And I put them aside because they're so chunky. The idea was to get them all chopped down before they go in the compost. Haven't got around to that in the last few days. Just keep running out of time and light. So I'm really glad I didn't because what I've done today, tinkle, tinkle, tinkle with the, uh, with the soil. I've grabbed a load of the roots to take home to see what on earth I can cook from them. You can smell that fennel, it's beautiful. I've no idea, I've never done it before. I will just check first of all that they actually are edible. I don't see why not. And if it was Michelle who told me this, I trust her. I think probably, because they're, they're probably quite, I don't know, maybe they're sort of like a parsnip carrot, because that's a root basically, isn't it? So I think probably, mmm, some yummy, yummy fennel soup from fennel roots. Ah, oh. right, stop dreaming, Vivi. Time to get more leaves. Right then, this is going to work. I've just put them in quite loosely, not quite halfway deep. Ah, I'm nervous to do this. It's going to be noisy and messy. Oh, here goes. Here goes nothing. Wish me luck. Wowzers. Let's just do that way round as well and then I'll show you. Oh my goodness, that's like using the stick blender in the kitchen at home. It's kind of noisy and it's sort of violent. But that has actually, oh there's still a few whole ones in there, but that has actually chopped them down quite a bit. Okay, so the question now is, that was not even half a bucket. Do I have the energy and the time to do that with barrow load after barrow load after barrow load? Realistically, today, I think not. But on other days, yeah, maybe I would. I think what I'm going to do is... I'll do the ones I've gathered today, uh, well, as much as I can before the light goes, and then uh, maybe do a big batch at the weekend when I've got a bit more time. It's, it's quite rare for me to be um, time pressured, but I have got an appointment to get to, and the light is going to go, but... <laughs> that's, that's crazy, crazy happy making. Yay! Wow, this really has been the quickest of quickie visits. Um, I don't like being against the clock when I'm in the garden. Oh my gosh, it's steaming up. It's getting quite dark now. You can't quite tell on the screen, I don't think, but it is, we're losing the light quickly. Yeah, I, I normally would not come to the garden if I know that so I've got a deadline or I've got to race off somewhere else. I Because I, I find it frustrating. I start to get into something and I'm really enjoying it. And if I'm looking at my watch every five minutes, it just takes you out of the moment. And I think so much of the pleasure of the garden is being in the moment while I'm here. That aside, I'm really glad I came today. Just get that little bed a bit more covered, <laughs> muck around with the leaves. So I did chop quite a few more up. My goodness me, it's a noise. <laughs> Easy, messy job. I've got loads, loads, loads more to get and to do. Ah, uh, that now might wait until the weekend. But it was fun to try. Um, it actually makes me think. I have been looking on Free Cycle, but haven't seen one. The kind of lawnmower my granddad had that he used to use for the orchard part of their garden. So where they had all the apple trees and cherry trees and or the bushes around the sides. The whole thing was um, grass, 
and he had this beautiful little sort of two wheel to sort of push along mower I mean they they take a bit of a shove and an effort but um, I think one of those would be perfect for me because a it would be quieter and I'm always kind of wary of disturbing the neighbours with power tools especially if it's a Sunday morning and I'm out here I don't want to do that B it wouldn't use any fuel other than me and I fuel myself up from the garden that would be great um, and it's interesting because I was looking recently in ah I forgot the name oh, I've got such a forgetful brain these days there's too much crammed in there already I digress sorry one of the viewers from North America sent me a link to a shop I say shop it's a whole series of barns, really, really, really beautiful barns that have been, been converted and all their merchandise, everything they sell is all geared towards the, as you would say in North America, the homesteader, as we might say here, the small holder, the self-sufficient person. And I remember, and it was what sparked it in my head, they had a whole load of tools including the little push two-wheel push lawnmower and I just thought isn't it great that someone is still manufacturing and selling that kind of thing isn't it great that we can go back to tools that don't rely on petrol or an electric battery I try not to worry too much about my electricity because I am with a company whereby I get all my electricity from renewable sources mostly solar and wind but with a little bit of wave power in there too even so even with green fuel how great for us and our bodies this is why we're all so obese these days we need to go back a hundred years almost although we don't want to go back a hundred years in terms of diseases and ill health it's one of the things I love about hand tools is that we have to work them, we work with them, they kind of become part of our body. I love, love, love that. We're using energy, we're making our muscles work, we're keeping all our ligaments and tendons supple, we're, we're building strong muscles. Oh, great stuff. As long as we don't hurt our backs in the process. Anyway, oh, I've digressed quite a bit, haven't I? But yeah. That's my thoughts on hand tools. Um, it's like when I do anything with my saw, people will say, oh, why don't you get a power saw? But when I use my hand saw, even though it bugs me and I'm not very good at sawing, it's quiet. I'm using my own energy. I feel more connected to the project I'm working on when it's my power that's operating the tool, as it were. Oh, right. I'd better shut up and skedaddle because the light is really going. I've got to be home in about 10 minutes. I'm going to have to gallop down the high street. So for now, I'll say cheerio to you all. It's just a super duper little quick catch up just to make the most of that light. That light when I was spreading the compost. Wasn't that beautiful? Oh, fresh air, light, birds, a little bit of exercise. What could be better? Okay, that's it. Over and out from Vivi. I'll see you all again really soon, I hope. But in the meantime, please take care of yourselves. Get out, do something, have fun, stretch your muscles, be happy. See you soon.